It is great to have you here. My name is Blake. I'm the lead pastor. I want to welcome all of you. It's wonderful to have you in the house of God today. There's a lot of people that are joining us online all over the world. Thanks for being a part of us. Uh, No matter what's going on in your family, I pray blessings on you if you're sick. We pray that you have health and prosperity in this coming year. And it's great to have you as a part of what's happening here at One Church. So, uh, man, God's up to some great things at this church, and uh, I'm excited today to talk to you about it. Um, Today's sort of an unusual talk. If you're new with us, this is your first time ever, I just want to warn you, this is a little bit of kind of a family talk that I have, uh, sort of a state of the union that I give every year to uh, talk about the vision here, but also talk about what God did in 2021. And so um, you'll kind of hear some of the blessings that God had on this church in the past year. Um, And for me, it's always um, a blast to sort of like look back and remember uh, and think about all that God did. And I'll tell you, a lot of people are like, man, 2021 was awful. Well, not for this church. For this church, the blessing and favor of the Almighty God was on this church. And I'm excited to kind of tell you some of the good and some of the bad, some of the things that were challenging uh, but also uh, to, to sort of brag on God today. So <clears throat> I hope you guys had a great week since Christmas. I got a chance to go to Florida with my family and my new grandbaby and spend the week. And now I, I have all boys around now. I've, I've had all daughters, four daughters my whole life. So I've spent my whole life with a bunch of women in my house. And I finally have boys. And so now that there's boys around, my daughters are like, Hey, Dad, uh, you know, you don't ever hang with us anymore? I'm like, well, yeah, I know. You, you don't like to play golf. And <laughs> that's the problem. And so I play golf, and I go riding, and I get in a lot of trouble because we, we ride our bikes. We went on a long uh, walk on the beach. And uh, while it was horrible weather here, I had a blast in Florida, just so you know that. So uh, it was great to be, be away, but it's good to be back. And um, so today... Um, I want to just tell you, start by telling you, um, one church, I love you. It's one of my greatest joys and honors of my life to be called your pastor. And um, as I go into sort of like this time of year and reminisce on all that God's done in just a year's time, it's overwhelming to me. Uh, and it's very humbling to get to share with you sort of what God's done. And so um, th- there's a word that goes along with th- the idea of a vision. When God gives us humans a vision, um, it's, it's sort of like he gives us this divine inspiration, he gives us a purpose. And when we're given a vision from God, um, it's like this new revelation or a dream. Some, you guys know what a vision is, right? When you're when you like, I've got a vision for this, and I don't care what it is, unless it's inspired by God, there's no life in it. God gives life. <clears throat> All life belongs to him. And so this kind of a vision is actually a Hebrew word called chazon. Everybody say chazon. You hack a loogie, and then you say chazon, right? It's a blast. And so um, I wouldn't turn to the person beside you when you say chazon, but uh, chazon is a way of of saying to God, "I, I want you to give me a divine inspiration. And it's important for me as a pastor to make sure that we constantly look to our vision our mission, and our purpose so that we align with the heart of God. Um, It's one thing to say that I have my own revelation or my own vision, but to to make sure that as a pastor, I'm lined up with the heart of God and that our collective vision and mission lines up with the heart of God is really all that matters to me. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not coming up here and, and doing things on my own power and instead turning to the Father, because if it's not a vision in life from the Father, then there's no life in it. God, God's the one that breathes life into our vision. And without his vision, we die. In fact, the Bible says that like this. Where there is no vision, the people, what? They perish, right? But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Um, when, when we obey and walk in the power of the Spirit, there's a life that comes from His command that brings order, right? His sovereign control and His absolute truth is what keeps us on the guardrails. And so delighting in His law is actually what brings happiness. 
And so we have a tendency to try to think that this world is going to bring happiness by doing whatever I want. And that's what's going to bring me happiness. I'm going to make myself happy by being able to have all the things I want and do whatever I want. But the truth is, the more that I walk in holiness, that's really how I experience happiness. And that's true for my family. It's true for my wife and I. It's certainly true for my kids, right? When my kids are walking in holiness, that's really cool. And obedience is really where you find ultimate happiness, right? And so if I've learned anything in the last two years, it's that when there's uncertainty, it it breeds anxiety and stress and worry. And uh, when there's times of uncertainty, people either embrace the change or they do everything they can to keep things the same. They die trying to keep things the same. When, when this last two years has proven that nothing is the same. Things are different now. And so my prayer is that in, the, in, in a world that is certainly uncertain, that our heart would not be uncertain, that we would not be uh, wavering, that instead my prayer is that God would keep us on mission like never before and we'd rest in and trust in God's sovereignty. How many believe that God is unchanging? He's he's unchanging. And so if there's anything that I'm certain about, it's that I can trust in the sovereignty and the unchanging heart of my Savior Jesus. And so um, this last year, I was blown away by watching this church pivot. If there's anything I've seen in the body of Christ, it's that when the world throws evil and anger and hatred and bitterness what we do is we go, you know what? You guys can be that way if you'd like to, but I, I'm going to rest in the promises of God, and I'm going to show the world what it looks like to have hope in the midst of despair, to have love in the midst of hatred. And I've, I've watched this church do that over and over again. Uh, when, when the world's going crazy, uh, I've watched you learn, learn how to throw an audible and uh, to be the, the brightness of, of, of the kingdom of God in the midst of utter darkness. And so um, what, what I've loved to see is that um, the, the mission of this church is timeless uh, because our God is timeless. He's unchanging and the mission of this church will not change. And that's to passionately love God and intentionally love people. That's what we do here. And that's what we're about. If you're new here, that's what we talk about all the time is that to passionately pursue and love God and to intentionally love God's people. And so um, our our church is on mission, and I believe that that right there is a God-sized chazon, right? To to have that is something that we can do the rest of our lives. And I've watched you this year bring hope in the midst of despair. I've watched you, One Church, be united when the world is divided. I've watched you give grace and help seek to understand. It's times like this that I I realize really fast what the body of Christ is really all about. And I've seen you turn to the scriptures and find your hope in the word of God. When when this world says everything is is crazy and nuts, right? I've watched you say, I I want a new and fresh vision from the Father. And so... um, I, I want to make sure and be clear that as your pastor, it scares me to death that I'm doing this on my own power. I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And every single week when I show up, I hope that I'm resting in His power and not my own. Because when we do things according to our own will and our own wisdom and our own strength, we overrule the, the Word of God. And we're choosing to, to choose my plan instead of God's plan. And so our human nature is to usually do things uh, that are inclined towards evil, right? We, we're very gifted at sinning. At least I am. It uh, came very natural for me to sin. And so um, I, I, want, I don't want to walk in selfishness. I want to walk in selflessness. And so because of that, it's important that we, we don't walk saying, God, I'm going to do things the way I want. Instead, I'm going to turn away from that spirit of rebellion and rivalry and I'm going to act as the sons and daughters of God that walk in submission and surrender to the Father, right? To ignore God is to forfeit His good. 
And his good has been blessed upon each of us individually and corporately. And when we are people that live under uh, the kind of darkness and immorality, that brings a tax to the people, right? If you've ever had parents or seen parents that w- walk in addiction, you know that the kids are living in chaos, right? They're neglected. But when people that are walking in obedience and holiness to the Father, there's peace in the house. There's calm. There's, there's uh, uh, joy in, in the midst of a world that's chaotic. And so that's, that's what I've seen the body of Christ become. In the midst of a world that's unruly and unrighteous, uh, it's, and, and there's this spiritual warfare that's on the, in the world right now, it's made me go, I'm so glad that I'm battling for the kingdom of God right now. More than ever before, if there's ever been a time to go, I'm gonna stand for what's truth. I'm gonna stand for justice. I'm gonna stand for what's right and what's good. I'm gonna be a part of the body of Christ that's actually bringing change in the world. It's now, and I'm fired up to be a part of that. And so here's what I would say to you. What if, what if, what if we had this like God-sized chazon, a vision that was just massive kingdom vision where we actually became a different kind of human. The kind of people that look like the people of God. I'm praying God would give us that kind of vision. The kind of vision that says, I I have this God-inspired dream. Maybe God's breathing something into you right now that he's saying to you, I want you to do that. I want you to go after that. I want you to do this thing, right? Pay attention to that. Pay attention to the voice of the Spirit of the Lord that might be saying, hey, I'm giving you a revelation. I'm giving you a, a chazon. What will, what will it be? And what will you become in the process? Because what's really weird, what's weird on planet Earth is to see people that actually listen to the voice of God and do what he says. That's weird. Those are the kind of people I love being around. Though. They're a little bit off, a little crazy right? Just a little bit weird. And those are my kind of people, the strange ones that are like, you know, have obedient children. That's weird, right? That have a husbands and wives that like actually like each other. That's weird, right? People that are, are like filled with love and like are kind. That's weird. People that have this inspired vision, a divine purpose. That's the kind of people that Yeshua came from heaven to actually create here on earth. A new kind of people. A new tribe. A new nation. A different kind of people that don't operate according to the standards of this world, but they look like heaven. They actually look like their Savior, Jesus, who, who's gentle. The kind of people that breathe life into the earth and they make it bud and flourish. Everything around them comes to life. There's, there's healing in their relationships. They give value to humanity. They turn away wrath and anger and bitterness and jealousy and slander and hatred. That's not who they are. They're the kind of people who liberate the oppressed and set the captives free. They're the kind of people who feed the hungry and help people find shelter. They, they help those that are needing a drink to find thirst. And they're, they're the kind of people that no matter what, they, they breathe love into the world. And, and humanity is better because they're there. That's the kind of people I want to hang with. That's the kind of church that I want to be a part of. People who delight in the goodness of God and actually love God to listen to his commands and do what he asks. Don't you want to be around that? Yeah. yeah. So um, I'd like to talk to you for just a second. This might feel like a little bit of a commercial, um, but I'm going to tell you some of the things that God did here. And I, I just want to remind us of what we all witnessed. Um, and I'm calling it what God's done in 2021. All right? Kind of rhymes. I like that. And so um, I want to start here, um, and while I do this, if you feel like it's necessary for you to get rowdy, that's okay. If you want to dance and jiggy, it's fine. So I, I want to start with the fact that in the last two years, three years of this church, about 15 to 20 people uh, gave their life to Christ and were baptized because of this church. But in 2021, would you believe that that number tripled and there was over 60 people 
that gave their life to Christ and were baptized with these church. Amazing. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this, but, you know, I, I, I'm the lead pastor. I'll do whatever I want. And so our giving this last year was remarkable. You guys were incredibly generous. And um, there's been no year in the history of this church that this church has actually made budget. But this past year, in 2021, we didn't just make budget. We weren't just like a few hundred dollars over or a few thousand dollars. Would you believe that we were $333,987 in excess of our yearly budget this past year. What the heck? <laughs> Amazing. And so people are like, man, 2021 was awful. I'm like, no, it wasn't. God's hand and blessing was on this house. And we grew in ways that, and you know what's crazy is, another thing that I think is a principle we need to pay attention to, this church gave more money than we've ever given in the history of this church. It gave over $200,000 away, and we were still in excess of that money. I think that God's showing us something, right? You, you choose to give, and he chooses to bless. And so, I, I don't know. That just blows me away. Um, we also uh, had the greatest attendance that our church has ever had. Uh, last year, to give you an understanding, at our Christmas Eve services, we had just over 800 people. Well, this past December, just two weeks ago, we had 1,400 people that came to be a part of our Christmas Eve service. Plus, there was more than that. But <laughs> So um, some of the things that blessed me the most is that I have a new dear friend that came, was called by God to be on staff here. And his name is Kevin and Cindy Tuttle. And they came to be our executive pastor, and he just sort of brings order in the midst of chaos. He's great at systems. He's great at helping um, uh, build all of the infrastructure that we desperately needed um, for our staffing and our office space and our, to lead and guide uh, performance uh, stuff for our team. And um, he's been such a blessing to my life as a friend already, and um, he's, he's just doing a phenomenal job. Another thing that I'm excited about is we've had um, an interview with six to eight new youth student pastors. And so um, we have our first candidate that's flying out here next weekend, and his name is Austin. I want you to be praying for him and his wife, too, that it would be the Lord that does that and directs that. Um, in the coming year, we're going to hire several new staff. Um, we, we need a full-time IT, what I call a digital ninja uh, that can help us with all of the website and all of the graphics that, you know, video, all of that. It's a big job, so be praying for that and be praying for a group's missions pastor to be called here. Um, so I, I'm seeing God bring a, a whole new team that's alive and filled with the Spirit of God. And um, I'm, I'm just seeing God do something r remarkable. Um, another massive celebration this past year for me was to get to see the vision uh, come, come to fruition in the upper room. And we got to see a, a $1.8 million facility built for our student ministry that's just thriving. The students love it up there. And my wife has done a great job in helping lead as we've not had a youth pastor in. Yeah, come on. Uh, and so the students are, are getting baptized and they just love bringing their friends. And um, we have new office space up there. I don't know if you've seen my office, but I'm spoiled rotten with this beautiful view over the lake. And I, I just feel so blessed to get to see all of that come to fruition. There's small group space that's used throughout the week by all of our small groups up there. And it's just amazing to see that. If you haven't seen it, I'd encourage you to go up there and check that out. Um, the, I just have to say, that day, the day of the ribbon cutting ceremony, where we had a big meal out on the lawn, it was so special for me uh, as our family just celebrated together and um, blessed that space and prayed over it. Um, super cool. And I, I just have to say in reminding you that w even though that was a $1.8 million expenditure, our church, because of our partnership with the Solomon Foundation, is debt free. Come on. <laughs> it's just crazy. So um, I'd like to brag on the academy. Um, I don't know if you guys um, are aware, but our academy is at 100% capacity, 
and have uh, amazing teachers that are called by God to be a part of that staff, over 20 staff that are a part of that. And um, it's self-sufficient. Um, it's an amazing ministry up there that they get to love on kids up to five years old. And that academy is just an, a, an amazing ministry. And this year, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but that building has had a really bad roof for a very, very long time. And so it's very expensive to replace that roof. And so we've been talking about it and waiting for the right time. And we have money to pay in cash uh, for a $160,000 new roof that's going on in the next couple weeks. So that's, that's very exciting. Um, yeah, so you guys just keep clapping if you'd like, shout, it's okay. If anybody wants to dance, feel free to dance. Um, I love our grow groups. We have very healthy grow groups here, and I, I always say it's more important to sit in circles than in rows, and it's because community matters, and we're better together, and especially now, uh, we, we need to have intimacy in one another's lives, and so our grow groups are thriving and we're going to be launching a whole lot of new groups in the coming year. Um, and I'd like to actually say that our, our missions connected to that um, are also beautiful because a lot of our grow groups do missions together. There's actually a couple of groups that have their own mission that they serve together, our I-58. Uh, we gave more money and pounds of food away than ever before in the history of the church this past year, which was beautiful. Um, and so... Um, I, I just love seeing that um, our missions budget was not just met this year, but we actually got to bless our missionaries throughout the world uh, with a year-end bonus that they've never received before, and there were tons of tears, and we were able to bless all, all of them in, in a bigger way than we ever have. And so I, I just have loved to see the, how our groups and our missions uh, have both flourished this, this past year. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the renovations that you've seen. One of them was we built this stage this year, which I just absolutely love because now I can get real close and spit on you and be real all up in your business while I'm preaching. Um, I just love it. Uh, so I, I love the new shrubbery. I don't know if you've noticed, but in the entrance way, we wanted to kind of redo that. and We put in a whole lot of new plants that are just gorgeous. And um, there's a person in our church that donated their time to actually fix all of our irrigation systems. So we're able to water the whole uh, campus now, which was a massive undertaking. And so that was such an incredible blessing. Um, we also have new cameras that have been donated to our church, uh, which were no small. Uh, they were like $22,000 a piece. And somebody bought three of them for our church. So they're on their way. They're gonna be here soon. And we're gonna need new camera operators. Um, and the reason for that is because um, the cameras that we bought were all we could afford at the time, but they're actually security cameras. <laughs> and so they're like real jerky, and sometimes they struggle to focus and, you know, things like that. And so uh, we decided to get some new cameras that are actually made for that. And so I'm excited to get those in, but we're going to need people to run those. And so if you want to be a part of our creative team, man, it's one of the best teams here and we'd love to have, we're going to need about 10 to 12 new folks on that team. We'd love to have you sign up for that in the coming year. Um, and because, here, here's the reason why. Our online presence really matters. People go to church six to 10 times online before they ever come in the door. And so it matters to me that we continue to work on our, our sound, our lighting, our cameras. All, all of that really matters because people, uh, people watch online before they come. So um, another thing that we've been renovating uh, and working really hard on is something that you guys don't even know, but we, we actually build beds for people uh, that are in need for, for orphans that, uh, or that are in the system that don't have beds. And so we have a wood shop that does that. And so if you've never been to our wood shop, it's actually getting new cabinets right now and it's being renovated. I'd love for you to be a part of that ministry if you'd like. We also have out in the same shop a ministry that helps single moms have their oil changed. And so over 100, I think 100, let's see how many people, 106 cars were serviced this past year. And that means 475 quarts of oil were given away because of this church. And so um, I'd also like to talk about a ministry that was started this past year. February, March, we launched a new ministry called Expectant. 
And it's because I wanted to be a church where it's actually a house of prayer, where people come here all the time to receive prayer and talk to God. And so the first Tuesday of every month, we get together as a church, maybe 80, 100 people, in a time of worship and just a time of prayer. It's real simple, um, but it's beautiful. So if you haven't been to that, I'd like to encourage you to come. It's coming Tuesday. Uh, we're going to have a time of prayer together, expectant. But here's the one rule. You better show up expectant. Uh, you see what I did there? And so um, another thing that I don't know if you've ever been a part of our kids' ministry, but I think it's probably our strongest ministry in our church. And it's because it's led by a rock star team of volunteers, hundreds every single week that show up to love on our kids. And, and Lori is just doing a phenomenal job as our kids' ministry. Isn't she doing fa fantastic? And so I know that they could use some new volunteers back there on that team. If, if you want to be a part of an amazing team, you should join our kids' ministry. Um, something else we do here every single year is we do Go Love Days. And so two to three of those a year where we go and serve those that are forgotten and people that need some uh, extra care and we build houses. Uh, we, so this last year we had over 200 uh, people that showed up to those ministry events and hundreds of hours served throughout this community. And I'm just so proud to see our church show up like an army to go serve every single time we have a Go Love Day. We also launched a new ministry for our men's and women's ministry that's doing phenomenal. Um, we, we took what was really working well for our women called Takeout Tuesday, and now we call it Takeout Together. And so men come together and women come together. And uh, for the men, you know, we, we had one of the biggest bonfires in the history of this church. I think it was like 60 feet tall. I mean, it was gigantic. And so what guys don't want to show up and burn stuff? It was awesome. And so... Um, I think it's still on fire, actually. <laughs> it's still burning. If you guys want to go out. Actually, it was burning for like a week. Anyways, um, it, it's been good to see our men get together and just get to know each other and hang out and talk about our struggles. And so it's the same with our women's ministry. So um, I, I also want to brag about something that is really special to this church. People don't know this, but we have one of the best Awana programs on this side of the Mississippi. Um, we, it's amazing. And it's run by amazing people, Randy and Jinda, and they do a phenomenal job. It's at capacity. They actually can't take more people because we don't have enough people to serve. Over 110 kids show up, and they memorize the scripture, and they're in great community together. And God's just doing something really special through that Awana program. So if you're not a part of that, I'd love to invite you. And then there's a couple of things that we did this past year that I just love. Uh, it just blesses me so much. We built a nine-hole Frisbee disc golf course. And that's mainly because I love Frisbee disc golf. And so since I'm your pastor, I wanted to build it. And so uh, I, I just love going out there and throwing a disc and walking around the property. There's a ton of people that are always out there. It just blesses me so much to see our property used for the kingdom of God. And then we also built something that I love, and that's pickleball. And so um, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to our Go Love store, you can buy branded pickleball paddles, which actually makes you an amazing pickleball player. Did you know that? Actually, that's not true. You'll probably be horrible. But it's, it's awesome to go out there. There's actually, let me see all the people that play pickleball. There's a lot of people that are in, yeah. So, and there, there's a lot of people that have come to our church because like, yeah, I was playing pickleball and I started to come to the church. So I, I just love seeing things like that used as a tool to invite people to come and be a part of the church um, because people need people. And the more that we use kingdom dollars for kingdom ventures and kingdom outreach, the more God will bless it. And so um, would you guys do me a favor and let God know, get a little bit rowdy and just let him know how, how proud you are of all that God's done through this thing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So really, it's kind of been a boring year. I haven't done much. Um, but I, I'm believing that 2022 is going to even be better and that God has things in store for us that we don't, don't even know yet. And so something that we say around here, it's kind of our motto. We say, everybody's welcome. Go ahead and say it with me. Nobody's perfect. Anything is possible. Everybody's welcome. That's actually all three of those things, I think, portray the nature of Jesus himself. 
And it's because um, when he was here, everyone felt equal in his presence. He gave grace and forgiveness in spite of our imperfections. And he performed miracles because he's the God of the impossible. It's the nature of Christ. And it's also evangelism, discipleship, and mission. It's those three things, and that's what I want to be about. See, the, the nature of Jesus is to always let lepers feel like they have a place. There's nobody that doesn't feel like they don't belong when you're in the presence of Christ and his followers. And something we say here is that we want you to belong before you behave or believe, right? It might take you a minute to behave right. At least it did me. It might take you a minute before you believe. That's okay. You belong before you behave and before you believe. Um, we, we want you to know that uh, the way that Christ let people feel is that if you're outside of the city and you're blemished and you're imperfect, it, it's okay. Jesus hung with a rough crowd. He actually hung with, with he was friends of sinners, friends of prostitutes. He, he, he was with people you weren't supposed to be with, right? And that, that's what he taught us. The, the thing that Jesus taught us the most was his inclusivity. He, you're included. He, he wanted people to feel included, right? He didn't play the game of favorites. He didn't pander to those who were important people. Um, we, we, I know a lot of churches that say that everybody's welcome, but they really act like, but these people over here are a little bit more welcome. Well, that's not the way we're going to roll here at this church. Everybody's welcome, and we're all created equal. Um, Jesus, I don't know if you know this, but he loved every color. He loved them all equally. He embraced every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. He even loved the filthy, nasty Roman tax collectors. He, he, he actually loved the IRS. I guess that's what that means. It didn't, it didn't matter to him. It wasn't important uh, who you were, what your background was, or what your resume, whether you're slave or free, a barbarian or Scythian, vaxxed or unvaxxed. He, he loved all of the people equally. There was room at the table for every type of human. And he loved every single race because it's just one race, and that's the human race, and it actually is his race. He, he created them all. And so Jesus, yeah, come on, you can get rowdy with that. He made time. He stopped. He uh, didn't let people feel like he doesn't have time for you. Instead, he was, he was the kind of human that made people feel overwhelmed by the way he welcomed you with a spirit of love and adoration. And that's the vision that we have here. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. And for a lot of people, that's not very comfortable. Uh, for a lot of people, they'd rather feel like they're privileged or elite. Well, well that's not the way that, that it's going to be at this church. And so if that's a problem for you, maybe you should find a different church. Because something we say here, and we're going to say it till we're dead, is everybody's welcome. And, and another thing that we say is that nobody's perfect. We're all broken sinners that are in desperate need of a Savior. I like to say it like this. We're ragamuffins and beggars in pursuit of some bread. We're orphans that are looking for a place to belong. Jesus didn't come for those people that have it all together. He came for the sick. He came to bring healing to the lame and to seek and save those that are lost and forgotten. And even people with COVID, you're welcome here. Jesus came to give dignity to those that feel worthless. Even, even though Jesus was perfect, he never made you feel like you couldn't live up to his perfection. If God could only use perfect people, then guess what? Nothing would get done. Because perfect people don't exist. Only sinners. Only broken beggars. Only people that feel like we're failures. And I know that from experience because, man, my past is rough. Let's just say that it's really colorful. And if God can use me, here's what I know. Then God can use you. So I'm just saying, if you're perfect, you, you might not fit in around here, and you're going to mess up what we have going. 
So, so by God's grace, God chooses to use unschooled fishermen, common folks, and, and imperfect people. So let's stop acting like we're perfect and get busy loving people just as they are. Amen? So nobody's perfect. And finally, uh, we believe that anything's possible. Like, really, anything's possible. Um, I think the number one thing that we're going to say when we get to heaven is, I just love this. <laughs> when we get to heaven, we're going to bump into people like, how the heck did you get here? <laughs> I really think that. <laughs> and everyone's going to be like, I don't know. I have no idea. Bumped into Jesus, he cut me a deal, and uh, I'm proof that anything is possible. And so, this has been my prayer since I came here, since God called me to this state and became a Georgia Dogs fan. Um, see, anything's possible. Things can change. Like, you can't say that yet. You're still OU bound. I understand. I still love the Sooners, but I'm starting to have a little bit of roof in me. And so, um, anything is possible. Um, I, I have to tell you a prayer, though, that God put on my wife and I's heart from the very moment that we came here. And it was a prayer that was given to Habakkuk. The prophet had, had come back to Israel, and the landscape was completely different. Um, the land was dry and weary. Um, but he had a vision. He had a chazon that was given to him that God would breathe on the land and the land would come to life. And so in chapter 3 of Habakkuk, there's this beautiful prayer where he's asking God to restore and renew what's been lost. See, the Babylonians had come into town and the Israelites had been in captivity and they'd been living in exile. And so when they came back, they found it in ruins. All had been lost, utterly destroyed. There is complete chaos. And Habakkuk's looking around and he's going, how are we going to fix this? What a mess. It's on fire. It's so broken. How can we get back to where we were? How can, how, God, can we find restoration in the land again? And the prayer is really simple. Lord, would you do the impossible? And so in Habakkuk 3, there's this prayer that says, Lord, I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Renew them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk is simply saying, God, I've heard about you. I've heard about the fire from heaven. I've heard about the Red Sea being parted. I've heard of your fame, and you are famous. Yeah, I know you've delivered people in the past. I've heard all that you've done, and I stand in awe of your mighty works and deeds, Yahweh. Would you do it again? Would you do it again? Would you do it again? And for me, <laughs> for this church, he's done it again. In 2021, he did it again. And I believe in 2022, he's going to do it again. I believe that God is going to manifest himself and he's going to Renew what's been lost again. People that are far from God. In our time, in my day, in this hour, God is making himself known again. Amen? <laughs> Isn't that what you want? What else is there? There is nothing else. That's all that I pray for. It's all that I long for. I don't want to show up week after week just playing church. I have no desire to be a part of slick gimmicks and a cheap imitation. All I long for is the power and presence of the living God because he changes everything, right? My fear is that I show up without an inspiration. My fear is that I show up and I stand on this stage without a divine chazon, that I show up without the spirit of the living God breathing into me. And that you'll, you'll show up and be convinced to invest in something that's not a kingdom adventure. That's not blessed by the favor and the spirit of, of God. I, I don't want you to waste your time. And I don't want to waste 
uh, anybody's words. I want to speak the truth of what I see. And I want the living God to manifest his presence so that we can see God show up in a real way. That's, that's my prayer. And that, that's actually what, what I've been praying is 2 Chronicles 7.14, where it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. That's the promise of God. And it's what, I, it's what I have invested everything into. That's all I want to live for is that. Ever since God called my wife and I and our family to this place, it's that God would show up and that he'd do that. That people would turn from their wicked ways. That we would seek the face of God. That we would fall on our face before him, desperate to see God give us a vision. A God-sized chazon. If you're wondering, hey, Pastor Blake, what's your three to five year plan? What are you going to do? That's it. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be prostrate before the Father. I'm going to pray. And guess what? He'll show us. That'll show us. He always does. He's faithful and true. He'll give me a sermon next week. I'm sure of it. But between now and then, I'm going to stress out like crazy. Right? I'm sure that God's going to take care of what we need. He's going to give us the money that we need. He's going to give us the house and the shelter and the food. And he's going to take care of us. It's going to be fine. 2022 is going to be amazing. And so this year, I want us to start the year with a 21-day prayer and fast. Um, and I want us to take some time to say, God, would you give us clarity and wisdom would you, would you give us a fresh chazon? Um, I, I don't want anybody to feel obligated, but I'd love to challenge us as a church to seek first the kingdom of heaven. That's what we do here. We seek God first. And so here's what I know about fasting. Anytime we fast and we take the discipline to replace the things of this world with the things of God, there's a breakthrough. And I want to break through. I want to start off with a, a new, fresh heart for God, for, for not just me individually, but for us as a body of Christ. And so here's the plan. Next Sunday, on January 9th, um, through the Sunday of January the 30th, let's read along together. And there's a Bible app called YouVersion. It's from my old church in Oklahoma City. Life Church, and they have this incredible, the Holy Bible. If you have it on your app, I'd like you to get that. And there's a, there's a plan. You go to a, read a plan, and the plan is called 21 Day Fast. I made this really simple for you. And so I want us to, to do a 21 Day Fast in that app together. And um, I want you to fast from something. Maybe it's one meal a day for you. Maybe it's every meal. Maybe for you, uh, it's time to put the Xbox aside. Maybe you fast from that. You're like, whoa, pastor, don't you get crazy. <laughs> Maybe it's social media. Maybe there's something in your life that you're like, it's taken too much of my time and I'm going to put it to the wayside for, for 21 days. Here's my challenge. Let's deny ourselves. Let's take up our cross and let's follow after Christ. Let's, let's let God uh, be first in our lives. And let's ask him, to breathe his vision into us. I'm believing that God is waiting to pour himself out on us if we'll just simply make ourselves available. God wants a new tribe, a new nation, a new people so that he can infect this city with the love of Christ. And I believe he's going to do that through us if we'll simply humble ourselves and pray. So church, in 2022, let's passionately love God and intentionally love people. And I would ask you when you say, God, I want to be intentional, I would ask that you ask him to give you a name. Maybe there's somebody specific right now that he's saying, yeah, you know who. It's on your block, it's somebody you work for, maybe somebody in your dorm room. 
Ask God specifically, who do you want me to be intentional with this coming year? Because I don't know if you know this or not, but God can use you even though it's maybe not a church service or a church event. He can use you right where you're at, in the grocery store or at the gym or in a cigar shop. God can use you in ways you'd never dreamed if you'll just make yourself available. God doesn't want you to walk around the need. He wants you to walk towards the need. He wants you to actually stop and to listen and to do something. He wants you to feed the poor. He wants you to love the forgotten. He wants you to forgive those who are forgettable. He wants you to embrace and he wants you to heal. So would you do that with us this year in 2022? Let's be more on mission and more on vision than ever before in the history of this church. Amen. Father God, we just want to thank you for giving us a God-sized vision at this church. I pray, Father, that we would be faithful, that we would be obedient to you, that you would fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, and that we'd walk with boldness in the coming year. God, I pray that we would step into the darkness like never before, and we would be a bright light for your kingdom and for your glory. Lord Jesus, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's in your name we pray. Everybody said, amen. amen. Come.